Amen. Okay, today uh, I want to speak about uh, the Messianic Bible. And uh, I want to speak specifically about Bible translation because, listen, false teaching, and there's a lot of false teaching in the Messianic movement, false teaching begins with false translation. Amen. And there are false translations that call themselves Messianic translations. You see, this is very serious. The translator is like the Kohen that carries the Aron Hashem Adon Kol Haaretz in front of B'nai Yisrael. He carries the Ark with the, with the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, and, and woe to him, woe to that Bible translator who twists the word, Amen. who twists the word of God to his own destructions. Amen. Now there are various attributes of a good translation. I don't have time to go into them, but one of them is certainly accuracy. One of them is faithfulness to the original language. Of, uh, one is avoiding subjective interpretation. And, and, and you know what? Since salvation is of the Jews, and since Yeshua was Jewish, a, a Bible translation ought to have some messianic Jewish quality to it. It should not just seem like a Goyish doc, document that comes from the Goyim. And, uh, and this is extremely important. And, and when, when you get down to a, a particular word, uh, like the word Alma in Isaiah 7.14, which is the linchpin, you know, the linchpin, the thing that holds the axle and the wheel together, the linchpin of the whole... Listen, if you trash that verse, you've trashed the whole Bible. Because Na'ara means young woman. He doesn't say the Na'ara will, will uh, get pregnant and, and have a son. Amen. No, it's Alma. And, 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 and you know, in the tale of two cities, uh, uh, Charles Dickens begins with, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Now, if I'm a translator and I'm translating this into Italian, if I write in, in Italian, it was the best of pickles and it was the worst of pickles. Well, uh, the, the publisher's going to throw it right in the garbage. He, it won't even get to the printing press. And yet, people do this to the Bible. They, they literally change the words and get away with it. Uh, almost like uh, the JWs who do the same thing. And, and, and the central miracle of the entire Bible is trashed when you don't translate Alma as young, unmarried virgin, which is what many of these so-called messianic translations do. Uh, look, a Nara is a young woman. Ruth was a young woman. And Alma is a young virginal woman. Actually, if you look at the standard lexicons, it says uh, a, a, a marriageable young lady uh, with the emphasis on virginity. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it, it's not... Look, if you have two words and you try to use them synonymously, uh, the word Nara and the word Alma, both are, both are talking about young women. Uh, but... They, they aren't both talking about a virgin. Ruth wasn't a virgin. Boaz calls her a Nara. He doesn't call her an Alma. Amen. Now, if I use the word geezer and the word lad, they would both have male, but they would not have youth in, 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 in terms of the synonymous idea of a boy and a lad. Both of those words have both youth and maleness. And when you have the word Alma and the word virginity, they both have two attributes. They have femaleness and they have virginity. And that's why Rebecca can be called both an Alma and a Betula. She can be called both because she is a virgin. And if the word Alma did not mean virgin, she couldn't. it would not be used in the same breath with, with, with the word Alma. Uh, and you, you wouldn't call somebody a Zona, a prostitute, and also a Betula. Uh, you, you wouldn't do that because one is definitely not a virgin and the other one is. Well, Alma is definitely a virgin or you could not use that word in, in, uh, synonymously with Betula. Alma is definitely a virgin. So the God of Israel... It's going to be with you. That's in uh, Joshua 1, 5 and Joshua 3, 7 and all through the Bible. And, and when he does get really with you, Emmanuel is when the, the virgin uh, gives birth to the Mashiach. 
And he comes to us, and this is Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And his name is Yehoshua or Yeshua. Amen. And, and, and friend, I want to give you three scriptures. Zechariah 6, 11, and 12, Ezra 3, 8, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, where Yeshua says, I am Yehoshua or Yeshua, the Tzemach of David. He uses that word. And that should, listen, friend, that should be in Revelation 22, 16. You look at your translation and see if it has it. Uh, the Yiddish translation I'm doing right now definitely has it. Amen. So Yehoshua ben uh, Yehotzadak, this this man, the grandson of Sarayah, the last Kohen Gadol of the first temple, and this man is the first Kohen Gadol of the second temple. His name is Yeshua, uh, Ezra 3, 8, Yehoshua, Zechariah 6, 11, and 12. Zechariah comes up to him and says, Your name, Yehoshua, Yeshua, is the Tzemach Moshiach. There it is right there. That should be in your translation. Yeah. If it's not, you're not really showing who this, this king is. This king, what is his personal name? We know that the Melech Yisrael, the Moshiach, Melech HaMoshiach, ha uh, king of Israel, we know his personal name is prophesied to be Yehoshua or Yeshua. And, yeah. and, and when you get to the book of, of Yehoshua, you see... Jericho, right there in the first few chapters, you see Jericho, this wicked city. Uh, you know, when you think of a New York City, you think of a modern Jericho. And, and, and it shows that your Jericho today, friend, is doomed. Uh, the abortion clinics, the same-sex wedding chapel, the Mariolatry centers, the Mormon temples, everything in it, the tattoo parlors, those, those are going to be destroyed. And there's going to be two kinds of people. There are going to be those who are saved and those who are perishing. Yeah. And, and Rahab and her family were saved. Yeah. And, and how were they saved? Because of the work of Yehoshua. And there's a picture right there uh, of salvation. That, that, yeah. that, that this woman is asking for Hesed to save. It says, Nafshatenu mimavit, my, uh, our soul from, from death. And in and, and, and Joshua chapter 2, verse 13, you see what, 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 what a, a Bible translation should do. Now, I'm not claiming that the Orthodox Jewish Bible is perfect, but I am saying that these are the areas that we are striving for and that all Messianic uh, translations should be striving for. And apparently we were able to do some of this because otherwise it wouldn't be on Bible Gateway and new version. But what I'm telling you right now is when you select a Bible translation, the linchpin to look at is Isaiah 7.14. If the translator can't get that right, don't trust anything else that he does. Amen. And I'm sick and tired of the bad doctrine uh, in Messianic Judaism. I'm sick and tired of false doctrine. And I'm telling you, friend, that false doctrine begins with false translations. Amen. It doesn't matter if your mother was Jewish. It doesn't matter if your father is Jewish. Amen. What matters is, do you twist the scriptures to your own destruction or not? Can you say amen? Amen. amen. amen.